Hello, I am Nur Lathar, PMPC PHM as an RTL certified and welcome to my presentation on PIMBA Guide 7th edition. In this part, we are going to explore measurement performance domain. As we know, there are 8 project performance domains. So, we are going to explore measurement performance domain. Before we start, let's explore some definition. The following definitions are relevant to the measurement performance domain matrix, a description of project or product attribute and how to measure it, baseline, the approved version of work product used as a basis for comparison to actual results, dashboard, a set of charts and graphs showing progress or performance against important measures of the project. So let us start measurement performance domain. The measurement performance domain addresses activities and functions associated with the assessing project performance and taking appropriate actions to maintain acceptable performance. Effective execution of this performance domain results in the following desired outcomes. A reliable understanding of the status of the project, actionable data to facilitate decision making, timely and appropriate actions to keep project performance on track, Achieving targets and generating business value by making informed and timely decisions based on reliable forecast and evaluation. Establish effective measures. What to measure? Presenting information, measurement pitfalls, troubleshooting performance, growing and improving interaction with other performance domain and checking results. So let's explore one by one. Establishing effective measures. Establishing effective measures helps to ensure the right things are measured and reported to stakeholders. Effective measures allow for tracking, evaluating and reporting information that can communicate project status help improve project performance and reduce the likelihood of performance deterioration. These measures allow the project team to use information to make timely decisions and take effective action. Key performance indicators, effective matrix. So let's see key performance indicators. Key performance indicators, KPIs, for projects are quantifiable measures used to evaluate the success of a project. There are two types of KPI, leading indicators and lagging indicators. Let's see, leading and lagging indicators. Leading indicators. Leading indicators predict changes are trend in the project. If change are trend is unfavorable, the project team evaluates the root cause of the leading indicators measurement and takes action to reverse the trend. Used in this way, leading indicators can reduce performance risk on project by identifying potential performance variance before they cross the tolerance threshold. Leading indicators may be quantifiable such as the size of project or the number of items that are in progress in the backlog. Other leading indicators are more difficult to quantify but they provide early warning signs of potential problems. The lack of risk management process, stakeholders who are not available or engaged are poorly defined. Project success criteria are all examples of leading indicators that project performance may be at risk. Now we'll see lagging indicators. Lagging indicators measure project deliverable or events. They provide information after the fact. Lagging indicators reflect past performance or conditions. Lagging indicators are easier to measure than leading indicators. Examples include the number of deliverables completed, the schedule or cost variance and the amount of resources consumed. Lagging indicators can also be used to find correlation between outcomes and environmental variables. For example, a lagging indicator that shows a schedule variance may show a correlation with project team members' dissatisfaction. This correlation can 
assist the project team in addressing a root cause that may not have been obvious if only measures was schedule status. In and of themselves, KPI are simply measures that have no real use unless and until they are used. Discussing leading and lagging indicators and identifying areas for improvement as appropriate can have positive impact on performance. Effective matrix. Measuring takes time and effort which could otherwise be spent on other productive work. Therefore, project teams should only measure what is relevant and should ensure that the matrix are useful. Characteristics of effective matrix are smart criteria include specific, meaningful, achievable, relevant and timely. So let's explore what is specific. Measurements are specific as to what to measure. Examples include the number of defects, the defects that have been fixed or the average time it takes to fix defects. Meaningful. Measures should be tied to the business case, baseline or requirements. It is not efficient to measure product attributes or project performance that do not lead to meeting objectives or improving performance. Now see achievable. The target is achievable given the people, technology and environment. Relevant. Measures should be relevant. The information provided by the measures should provide value and allow for actionable information. Timely. Useful measurements are timely. Information that is old is not as useful as fresh information. Forward looking information such as emerging trends can help project teams change direction and make better decision. The SMART acronym described previously can use alternative terms. For example, some people prefer measurable instead of meaningful, agreed to instead of achievable, realistic or reasonable instead of relevant, and time bound instead of timely. Now we'll see what to measure. What is measure? The parameters and the measurement method depend on the project objectives, the intended outcomes and an environment in which the project takes place. Common categories of matrix, matrix include deliverable matrix, delivery, baseline performance, resources, baseline value, stakeholders and forecast. A balanced set of matrix helps to provide a holistic picture of the project, its performance and its outcome. Deliverable matrix, delivery, baseline performance, resources, business value, stakeholder and forecast. So let's explore one by one. Deliverable matrix. By necessity, the products, service or results being delivered determine the useful measures. Customary measures include information on errors or defects, measures of performance and technical performance measures. So let's see first information on errors or defects. This measures include the source of defects, number of defects identified and number of defects resolved. Measures of performance Measures of performance characterize physical or functional attributes relating to the system operation. Examples include size, weight, capacity, accuracy, reliability, efficiency and similar performance measures. Technical performance measures. Quantifiable measures of technical performance are used to ensure system components meet technical requirements. They provide insight into progress in achieving the technical solution. delivery. Delivery measurements are associated with the work in progress. These measures are frequently used in project using adaptive approaches. Work in progress, lead time, cycle time, queue size, batch size and process efficiency. So let's explore one by one work in progress. 
This measures indicates the number of work items that are being worked on at any given time. It is used to help the project team limit the number of items in progress to manageable size. Lead time. This measures indicates the amount of elapsed time from a story or chunk of work entering the backlog to the end of the iteration or the release. Lower lead time indicates a more effective process and more productive project team. Cycle time. Related to lead time, cycle time indicates the amount of time it takes the project team to complete a task. Shorter times indicate a more productive project team. A consistent time helps predict the possible rate of the work in the future. Q size. This measure tracks the number of items in a queue. This matrix can be compared to the work in progress limit. Little's law states the queue size is the proportional to the both the rate of arrival in the queue and the rate of the completion of items from the queue. One can gain insights into the completion times by measuring work in progress and developing a forecast for future work completion. Batch size. Batch size measures the estimated amount of work, level of effort, story points, etc. What is expected to be completed in an iteration. Process efficiency. Process efficiency is a ratio used in lean systems to optimize the flow of work. This measures calculates the ratio between value adding time and non-value adding activities. Tasks that are awaiting increase the non-value adding time. Tasks that are in development or in verification represent value adding time. Higher ratios indicate a more efficient process. Now I see baseline performance. The most common baseline are cost and schedule. Projects that track a scope or technical baseline can use information in the deliverable measures. Most schedules measures and track actual performance to plan performance related to start and finish date, effort and duration, schedule variance, schedule performance, index, feature and completion rates. So let's explore one by one start and finish dates. Comparing the actual start dates to the planned start dates and the actual finish dates to the planned finish dates can measure the extent to which work is accomplished as planned. Even if the work is not on the longest path through the project, the critical path, late start and finish dates indicate the project is not performing to plan. Effort and durations. Actual effort and duration compared to plan effort and duration indicates whether estimates for the amount of work and the time the work takes are valid. A schedule variance. A simple schedule variance is determined by looking at the performance on the critical path when used with earned value management. If it's this is fine. It is the difference between the earned value and the planned value. Schedule performance index. A schedule performance index is an earned value management measure that indicates how efficiently the scheduled work is being performed. Future completion rates. Examining the rate of feature acceptance, frequent reviews can help assess uh, progress and estimate completion dates and cost. Common cost measures include actual cost compared to planned cost, cost variance, cost performance index. So let's see actual cost compared to plan cost. This cost measure compares the actual cost for labor or resources to the estimated cost. This term may be referred to as burn rate. Cost variance. A simple cost variance is determined by comparing the actual cost of deliverable to the estimated cost when used with earned value management. It is the difference between the earned value and actual cost. Figure 
dash 24 shows an earned value graph illustrating the cost variance. Figure 2-24 shows an earned value graph illustrating the cost variance. Cost variance is equal to earned value minus actual cost. The schedule variance is equal to earned value minus plant variable and cost performance index earned value divided by actual cost and schedule performance index earned value divided by planned value now see cost performance index an earned value management measure that indicates how efficiently the work is being performed with regard to budgeted cost of the work. Now I'll go to next, that is resources. Resource measurements may be a subset of cost measurement since resource variance frequently lead to cost variance. The two major evaluate price variance and usage variance. Measures include plant resource utilization compared to the actual resource utilization and plant resource cost compared to actual resource cost. So let's see first plant resource utilization compared to actual resource utilization. This measurement uh, compares the actual usage of resources to the estimated usage. A usage variance is calculated by subtracting the planned usage from the actual usage. Planned resource cost compared to actual resource cost. This measurement compares the actual cost of resources to the estimated cost. Price variance is calculated by subtracting the estimated cost from the actual cost. Business value. Business value measurements are used to ensure the project deliverable stays aligned to the business case and the benefit realization plans. Business value has many aspects, both financial and non-financial. Metrics that measure financial business value include cost benefit ratio, planned benefits delivery compared to actual benefit delivery, return on investment and net present value. So let's see the first cost benefit ratio. This is the measure of expected present value of an investment with initial cost. The cost benefit ratio is used to determine if the cost of project outweigh its benefit. If the costs are greater than the benefits, the result will be greater than 1.0. In this case, the project should not be considered unless there are regulatory, social good or other reasons to do the project. A similar measure is a benefit cost ratio. The same measures are used but the benefits are in numerator and the cost are in denominator. For this measure, if the ratio is greater than 1.0, the project should be considered. Planned benefits delivery compared to actual benefits delivery. As part of business case, organization may identify values as the benefit that will be delivered as a result of doing the project. For projects that expect to deliver benefits during project life cycle, basing the benefits delivered and the value of those benefits. Then comparing that information to business case provides information that can justify the continuation of project or in some case the cancellation of the project. Now see return on investment ROI. A measure of the amount of financial return compared to the cost ROI 
return on investment is generally developed as an input to the decision to undertake a project. There may be estimates of ROI at different point in time across the project life cycle. By measuring ROI throughout the project, the project team can determine if it makes uh, sense to continue the investment of the organizational resources, net present value NPV. The difference between the present value of inflows of capital and the present value of outflows of capital over a period of time. NPV is generally developed when deciding to undertake a project. By measuring the NPV throughout the project, the project team can determine if it makes sense to continue the investment of organizational resources, stakeholders. Stakeholder satisfaction can be measured with surveys or by inferring satisfaction or lack thereof and by looking at related metrics such as Net uh, Promoter is Score, NPS, Mood Chart, Morale, and Turnover. So let's see. Net Promoter is Score. A Net Promoter is Score measures the degree to which a stakeholder, usually the customer, is willing to recommend a product or service to others. It measures a range from minus 100 to plus 100. A high net promoter score not only measures satisfaction with the brand, product or service, it is also an indicator of customer loyalty. Mood chart. Mood chart. A mood chart can track the mood or reactions of a group of very important stakeholders. The project team. At the end of each day, project team members can use colors, numbers, or emojis to indicate their frame of mind. Figure 2-25 two, two shows the mood chart using emojis. Tracking the project team's mood are individual. Project team members' moods can help to identify potential issues and areas for improvement. Now I'll go to next, Morel. Since mood boards can be subject to, another option is to measure project team morale. This can be done by surveys asking the project team members to relate their agreement on a scale of 1 to 5 statements such as I feel my work contributes to overall outcomes. I feel appreciated. I am satisfied with the way my project team works together. Turn over. Another way to track morale is by looking at the unplanned project team turnover. High rates of unplanned turnover may indicate low morale. Forecast. Project teams use forecasts to consider what might happen in the future so they can consider and discuss whether to adapt plans and project work accordingly. Forecasts can be qualitative such as using expert judgment about what the future will hold. They can also be casual when seeking to understand the impact a specific event or condition will have on future events. Quantitative forecasts seek to use past information to estimate what will happen in future. Quantitative forecasts include estimate to complete, estimate at completion, variance at completion, to complete work performance index, regression analysis and throughput analysis. So let us start first, estimate to completion, ETC. And Earned value management measures that forecast the uh, expected cost to finish all the remaining project work. There are many different ways to calculate the estimate to complete. Assuming past performance 
is indicative of future performance, a common measurement is calculation of budget at completion minus the earned value, then dividing by cost performance index. Estimate at completion. This earned value management measures forecast the expected total cost of completing all works see figure 2-26 there are many different ways to calculate the estimate at completion assuming past performance is indicative of future performance a common measurement is the budget at completion divided by the cost performance index figure 2-26 forecast of estimate at completion and estimate to complete variance at completion VAC and earned value management measure that forecast the amount of budget deficit or surplus it is expressed as the difference between the budget at completion BAC and the estimate at completion EAC to complete performance index TCPI and earned value management measure that estimates the cost performance required to meet a specified management goal. TCPI is expressed as the ratio of the cost to finish the outstanding work to remaining budget. Now we'll see regression analysis. An analytical method where a series of input variables are examined in relation to their corresponding output results in order to develop a mathematical or statistical relationship. The relationship can be used to infer future performance. Throughput analysis. This analytical method assesses the number of items being completed in a fixed time frame. Project teams that use adaptive practices use throughput metrics such as features complete versus features remaining, velocity and story points to evaluate their progress and estimate likely completion dates. Using duration estimates and bond rates of stable project teams can help verify and update cost estimates. Now we'll go to next, that is presenting information. Presenting information. The measures being collected are important, but what is done with the measures is just as important for information to be useful. It has to be timely, accessible, easy to absorb and digest and presented so that it correctly conveys the degree of uncertainty associated with the information. Visual displays with graphics can help stakeholders absorb and make sense of information. Dashboard information radiators and visual controls. Dashboards. A common way of showing large quantities of information on matrix is a dashboard. Dashboards generally collect information electronically and generate charts that depict status. Often dashboards offer high level summaries of data and allows drill down analysis into contributing data. Figure 2-27 provide an example of dashboard. We'll see later. Dashboards or often include information displayed at a spotlight chart, also known as RAG charts, where RAG is an abbreviation for red, umber, green. Bar charts, pie charts, and control charts. A test explanation can be used for any measures that are outside the established threshold. Information radiators. Information radiators, also known as big visible charts, BVCs, 
are visible physical displays that provide information to the rest of the organization enabling timely knowledge sharing they are posted in a place where people can see the information easily rather than having information in a scheduling or reporting tool bvc should be easy to update and they should be updated frequently they are often low tech and high touch in that they are manually maintained rather than electronically generated figure 2-28 shows an information radiator associated with the work completed work remaining and risk burn down chart shows how much work is yet to be completed burn up chart shows how much work has been completed combined burn chart shows how much work has been completed and how much remain reference one the main supplier cannot deliver on time because of other commercial commitments date likelihood okay impact high and risk rating an owner who is owner any include financial penalties in contract build contingency into the schedule monitor contractor performance okay I request you guys please pause this video and read yourself remaining items. Now you see visual controls. In lean environments information radiators are known as visual controls. Visual controls illustrate processes to easily compare actual against expected performance visual control shows a process using visual cues visual controls can be present for all levels of information from business value delivered to tasks that have started they should be highly visible for anyone to see task boards burn charts other type of charts so let's see task boards A task board is a visual representation of the planned work that allows everyone to see the status of the task. A task board can show work that is ready to be started to do, work in progress and work that is completed. See figure 2-29. Task boards are Kanban board. A task board allows anyone to see at a glance, the status of particular task or the number of tasks in each stage of work. Different color sticky notes can represent different types of work and dots can be used to show how many days a task has been in its current position. Flow based projects such as those that use Kanban boards can use these charts to limit the amount of work in progress. If a column is approaching the work in progress limit, project team members can swarm around the current work to help those working on tasks that are slowing the flow. Burn charts. Burn charts such as burn up or burn down charts can show project team velocity. Velocity measures the productivity rate at which the deliverables are produced, validated and accepted within a predefined interval. A burn up chart can track the amount of work done compared to the expected work that should be done. See figure 2-30. A burn down chart can show the number of story points remaining or the amount of risk exposure that has been reduced. Okay, figure two dash thirty burn up chart. Story point done.
Now we will see other types of charts. Visual charts can also include information such as impediment list that shows the description of the impediment to getting work done, the severity and the actions being taken to resolve the impediment. Now we'll see measurements pitfall. Project measures help the project team meet the project objectives. However, there are some pitfalls associated with the measurement. Awareness of these pitfalls can help minimize their negative effect. Hawthorne effect, vanity matrix, demoralization, misusing matrix, confirmation bias, correlation versus causation. So let's start. Hawthorne effect. The Hawthorne effect states that every act of measuring something influences behavior. Therefore, take care in establishing metrics. For example, measuring only project team's output of deliverable scan encourages the project team to focus on creating a large volume of deliverables rather than focusing on deliverables that would provide higher customer satisfaction. Vanity matrix. A vanity matrix is a measure that shows data but does not provide useful information for making decision. Measuring page-wise view of website is not as useful as measuring the number of new viewers. Demoralization. If measures and goals are set that are not achievable, project team morale may fall as they continuously fail to meet targets. Setting stress goals and aspirational measures is acceptable, but people also want to see their hard work recognized. Unrealistic or unachievable goals can be counterproductive. Misusing the matrix. Regardless of matrix used to measure performance, there is the opportunity for people to distort the measurement or focus on the wrong thing. Examples include Focusing on less important matrix rather than the matrix that matter most. Focusing on performing well for the short term measures at the expenses of long term matrix and working on out of sequence activities that are easy to accomplish in order to improve performance indicators. Confirmation bias. As a human beings, we tend to look for and see information that support our pre-existing point of view. This can lead us to false interpretation of data. Correlation versus causation. A common mistake in interpreting measurement data is confusing the correlation of two variables with the idea that one causes the other. For example, seeing projects that are behind the schedule and over budget might infer that projects that are over budget cause schedule issues. This is not true, nor it is true that projects that are behind the schedule cause budget overruns. Instead, there are likely other correlating factors that are not being considered such as skills in estimating, the ability to manage change and actively managing risk. Now we'll see it next, that is troubleshooting performance. Part of measurement is having agreed to plans for measures that are outside the threshold ranges. Part of measurement is having agreed to plans for measures that are outside the threshold ranges. Threshold can be established for a variety of metrics such as schedule, budget, velocity and other project specific measures. The degree of variance will depend on stakeholder risk tolerances. Figure 2-31 shows an example of budget threshold set at plus 10% orange and minus 20% green of the predicted spend rate. The blue line is tracking the actual spend and is 
and in January it exceeds the plus 10 percent upper tolerance that would trigger the exception plan. Ideally project team should not wait until a threshold has been breached before taking action. If breach can be forecasted via a trend or new information, the project team can be proactive in addressing expected variance. An exception plan is an agreed upon set of actions to be taken if threshold is crossed or forecast. Exception plans do not have to be formal. They can be as simple as calling a stakeholders meeting discuss the matter, the importance of the exception plan is to discuss the issue and develop a plan for what needs to be done. Then follows through to make sure the plan is implemented and determine the plan is working. Now let's go to next topic that is growing and improving. The intent in measuring and displaying data is to learn and improve, to optimize project performance and efficiency. Only measure and report information that will allow the project team to learn, facilitate decision, improve some aspect of product or project performance, help avoid an issue and prevent performance deterioration. Applied appropriately measurements facilitate the project team's ability to generate business value and achieve the project objectives and performance targets. Now we'll see interaction with other project performance. The measurement performance domain interacts with planning, project work and delivery performance domain as planned from the basis for comparing the deliverable to plan. The measurement performance domain can support the activities that are part of the planning performance domain by presenting up-to-date information so that lesson learned can reflect favorable or unfavorable information for updating plans. The team and stakeholder performance domains interact as project team members develop the plans and create the deliverables and deliveries that are measured. And unpredictable events occur, both positive and negative. They have an impact on the project performance and therefore on the project measurements and metrics. Responding to changes caused by uncertain events that have occurred includes updating measurements that have been impacted due to the change, activities in the uncertainty performance domain such as identifying risks and opportunities can be initiated based on performance measurements. Part of the Project work is working with the project team and other stakeholders to establish the matrix, gather the data, analyze the data, make decision and report on project status. Checking results. Table 2-9 identifies the outcome from effective application of the measurement performance domain on the left and ways of checking them on the right. Table 2-9 Checking Outcomes Measurement Performance Domain Outcome A reliable understanding of status of the project. Check Audit measurements and reports demonstrate if data is reliable. Actionable data to facilitate decision making. Measurements indicate whether the project is performing as expected or if there are variances. Outcome, timely and appropriate action to keep project performance on track, what to check. Measurements provide leading indicators and our current status lead to timely decision and action. Outcome, achieving targets and generating business value by making informed and timely decision based on reliable forecast and evaluation, what to check. Reviewing past forecast and current performance demonstrate if previous forecasts reflect the present accurately comparing the actual performance to the planned performance and evaluating business documents will show the likelihood of achieving intent value from the project. Measurement involves assessing project performance and implementing appropriate response to maintain optimal performance. 
Measurement performance domain evaluates the degree to which the work done in the delivery performance domain is meeting the metrics identified in the planning performance domain. For example, performance domain can be measured and evaluated using baselines identified in the planning performance domain. Having timely and accurate information about project work and performance domain allows the project team to learn and determine the appropriate action to take to address current or expected variances from the desired performance. Measures are used for multiple reasons including evaluating performance compared to plan, tracking the utilization of resources, work completed, budget expended etc, demonstrating accountability, providing information to stakeholders, assessing whether the project deliverables are on the track to deliver planned benefits, focusing conversation about trade-offs, threats, opportunities and options and ensuring the project deliverable will meet customer acceptance criteria. The value of measurements is not in the collection of dissemination of the data, but rather in the conversation about how to use the data to take appropriate action. Therefore, while much of its performance domain addresses various types of measurements that can be captured, use of the measures occur within the context of activities in other performance domains such as project team and stakeholder discussion, coordinating project work and so forth. This performance domain focuses on measures for active projects. A portfolio leader may want to include measures that address the success of project after it is completed, such as whether the project delivered in the intended outcomes and benefits. Portfolio leaders may assess if the project outcome increase customer satisfaction, decrease costs per unit or other measures that are not available until after the project has closed. Similarly, Business managers may assess the project from the perspective of value to the outcome brings to the organization. Business measures might include increase in market share, increase in profit, or decrease in cost per unit. The measurement performance domain addresses measures and metrics that are used during the project. Okay, that brings us to end up my presentation. Thank for watching. In next presentation, we are going to explore last project performance domain that is uncertainty performance domain. I hope you would have found this information useful. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel.